Oppo just launched the Renault Pro Plus and the Renault 10 Pro and both of them with some impressive specs. Now while they both look similar, there are some differences that justify the higher price tag on the 10 Pro Plus, especially with Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip and that 64 megapixel telephoto portrait camera. But before we get into all of that, let's unbox these and see what we've got in here. Alright guys, so we've got the Oppo Renault 10 Pro Plus and the Oppo Renault 10 Pro. We're going to unbox the Oppo Reno 10 Pro Plus first and then we'll come to this right after. The good thing is that these phones come with pretty much everything in the box. So there you go, that's the phone. Quite nice and classy, it's got a nice lilac shade to it. It's a glossy finish but it has matte color. The 100 watt Superbook charger and a Type-C cable for charging. You do get the protective case in the box and there's a screen protector pre-applied. So let's get done with that. Uh, on the Renault 10 Pro, again, it's exactly the same packaging, except you get an 80 watt charger in the box. Now guys, before I get into detail about these phones, I do want to give you a quick overview just to know where these phones really stand. And so here are the specs along with the variants and pricing. You can pause here and go through these, but essentially the Pro Plus guarantees you a higher performance, both in raw power and camera, given its higher price tag. Now, clearly both these devices look very similar, but there are some differences. So I've got the purple color here, which has a matte purple color, but it's a glossy texture. Also, they both come in silver gray as well. Now, both have similar 3D curved design. They've got a glass bag, a two-tone design camera housing uh, made using metal and glass, and quite lightweight given their camera structure. They both also have an IR sensor, so you can control, you know, all your remote controlled appliances from your phone directly. It's a dual nano SIM device with no micro SD card slot and no support for eSIM. I do want to point out that both of these are actually quite slippery, so putting on a case would be the right thing to do. Now there are two key differences in terms of design. The Pro Plus, it has Gorilla Glass 5 protection at the back and it's got dual stereo speakers. The Pro, it lacks both of them. But the front is protected using Dragon Trail Star 2 on both the phones, which by the way is considered 20% stronger than Gorilla Glass 5. And so that's good. Also, there is no IP certification in terms of water and dust resistance. So that's missing on both the phones. But you know, today, almost all phones are splash resistant to some extent. However, please do not put any of these phones into water because even with IP certification on the phones, you can't avail warranty if you do damage them because of water. But hey, both of them have absolute gorgeous displays. Big AMOLED screens and curved displays, so you get very immersive displays and extremely thin bezels. So yeah, looks good. And they're both 120Hz. They adapt dynamically to optimize battery use and they are HDR10 Plus compatible. Although for Netflix, as of now, it does not support HDR content. Both the devices are bright enough for easy viewing outdoors. The Renault 10 Pro Plus, however, goes all the way up to 1400 nits in peak mode. But guys, one thing to keep in mind with curved displays is that you don't easily get a tempered glass for protection. And even if you do, the fingerprint sensor doesn't work as well. Just keep in mind. And talking about fingerprint sensor, it works just fine. Though I would have preferred if it was here instead of, you know, being so close to the bottom edge. But anyway, you know, the face unlock works really well and that's what I would use most of the times. Okay, now let's talk about performance and I'm going to pick the Pro 10 Plus because this is actually packing last year's flagship performance. So Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, up to 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 fast internal storage. And also if you look at the performance scores of the Renault 10 Pro Plus, it's somewhat close to the performance scores of the flagship phones that have launched this year. I mean, undoubtedly, the 10 Pro Plus is a great performer, whether it's, you know, launching apps, whether it's moving between them, whether it's gaming, this is good to go for a couple of years, easy. Like even with Call of Duty, you could easily punch up the graphic quality and the frame rates to get a very good gaming experience. However, the Renault 10 Pro, on the other hand, this uses Snapdragon 778G. Now let's talk about battery and charging for a moment, and I do want to highlight one thing. The Pro Plus, it comes with 4700 milliampere hours, and this one comes with 4600 milliampere hour. Now, majority of phones in this price segment these days is offering 5000 mAh, so it does feel a little less. But then the good part is that both these phones come with super fast charging speeds. The Renault 10 Pro Plus supports 100 watts of peak charging speeds, whereas the 10 Pro, 80 watts. And so even if you do feel that you're running short on battery or you know you want a quick top up, it's actually pretty fast. Now, let's talk about cameras, because I guess that is where the Renault 10 series is really trying to position itself differently and a little uniquely. And I really want to get into 
the 64 megapixel telephoto portrait sensor on the 10 Pro Plus and the 32 megapixel uh, on the Renault 10 Pro. So let's talk about those. So, you know, these telephoto sensors, they really help you get impressive portrait photos with very natural depth. And there are two major differences here. In the Pro Plus, because you have a 3x optical zoom, you get a more appropriate background blur as opposed to the 2x portrait photo on the 10 Pro. And the other thing is that the white balance on the Pro Plus is more on point and slightly warmer, which makes it look more rich than the one on the 10 Pro. But yeah, if you take photos of pets, your kids or people in general, these periscope telephoto cameras will give you great results. And because these are in such high resolution, the detailing you get is better than most smartphones in this price segment. And by the way, to take these pictures in these high resolution modes, you need to first select high res in the camera and then shift to 3x on the Pro Plus or 2x on the Pro and then you can take these excellent portrait shots. And let's also talk about other cameras in here. So you get a 50 megapixel primary lens with optical image stabilization and an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 32 megapixel front facing camera. And looking at the camera samples, the primary lens on both of them are actually quite good. I really like how these pictures have come out. Uh, there's a very minor difference between the photos taken using the primary lens of the 10 Pro Plus and the 10 Pro in that the 10 Pro Plus has a slight magenta tone to it and a slightly better dynamic range. But again, the differences are very subtle and honestly, you couldn't go wrong with either of them. And same holds true for their ultra wide lens as well. Pictures are very similar from both the cameras and quite decent to look at. In low light, the Pro Plus is absolutely amazing. Very good detail, low noise, and pictures come out quite natural looking. The regular 10 Pro photos in low light are softer and they lack detail. And same holds true for selfies as well. The 10 Pro Plus captures skin tones quite evenly, good detail, and also handles uh, light falling on the skin very well. I do want to point out that I did have beautification turned on at about 30%, but you could turn that off completely. The 10 Pro isn't as bad, but it does feel softer and does struggle sometimes to capture skin tones when very brightly lit. And here's a quick video sample from both the phones, uh, which can shoot at 4K resolution all the way up to 60 FPS. Uh, the Pro Plus definitely yields a very good quality video. The Pro, however, does suffer from some shake, which you could eliminate using a gimbal or something. All right, so guys, this is a video sample using the front facing camera. It can shoot at 1080p at 30 FPS. But yeah, this is the quality I'm recording straight into the microphones of the phone. This is, you know, the sun's right against, uh, right opposite me. And this is when the sun is right behind me. So yeah, I think it handles pretty well, at least on the screen it does. But you guys are probably a better judge of how it's looking uh, even before I do. And now coming to the software. So both are running Android 13. They've got ColorOS 13 on top. Here's the interesting part. The 10 Pro Plus, which is obviously a little bit more expensive, is going to give you three years of Android upgrades and four years of security updates. But the slightly cheaper version, which is the 10 Pro, there you'll get two years of Android upgrades and three years of security updates. So you spend more, you get more. So first things first, there is bloatware for sure. There are apps in here that you don't want, which you can uninstall. And then there's the infamous hot apps and hot games too, which you would need to go and disable. Other than that, it's ColorOS, so you get quite a few useful features built right into it. There's smart bar on the side to access favorite shortcuts and apps. And of course, all of that is customizable. There's screenshot gestures to take full screenshot or partial screenshots. There's multi-screen connectivity, so you can cast your phone screen on laptops, tablets, and then there are also a couple of special features that you can configure and personalize to really make the most of your phone. For example, launch anything from your fingerprint sensor as you unlock. There's gestures and motions that you can also make use of. And Oppo has also refined its always on display. So not only can you see notifications and music playback, you can also track your Uber trips and food deliveries from apps like Swiggy and Zomato. All right, that's it guys about the Reno 10 Pro Plus and the 10 Pro. Now, I know you might find it oddly priced, but it's about whether you find value in the things that these phones have to offer. They're definitely designed differently. They're very unique and distinct in the way they look. And you must find value in the photography experience that these phones have to offer. Okay, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely help you out. And if you did enjoy watching the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, guys, and hit that bell notification icon. And mark all really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.